Welcome back, another episode. I've got heaps of inboxes lately about where we go, where we stay in when we go hunting and fishing and away every weekend, so this is it. We're gonna run through everything that we've had. Keep in mind, it's probably like four years old now, three to four years old. So at the moment, it's done every single state except for WA and Tasmania. But um, yeah, this is it. Come a long way it's done us good so hopefully you might get some ideas on what you guys want to build canopies are pretty much seem to be the craze these days but there's not too many with the pop top so we'll go through it this is it one day get here all right so i'm just going to give you guys a bit of a rundown on our kitchen space area and a bit of storage as well so here we have at the moment our first aid kit but when we do our big trips it actually fits Woolies like tub water perfectly in there for long trips where you can't have access to any water for a while. It's got a bit of a pull out drawer system. So in here we've got just cutlery, spare tea towels, um, all foil and all that kind of stuff in there. In here, in here we've just got all our spices, sauces, you know, oats, flour, anything like that goes in there. Um, here we have generally goes our dry food um, and any canned food. Our, we've got a gas bottle here, I'm not sure how many litres that is, but that's where all of that goes. Here we've just got our cook pot um, and any extra large storage, sometimes cases of beer going here. Um, this is our little kitchenette thing I'll let Jack pull that out though and um, in here we also have our power section which I'll let Jack go through because that's his forte not mine all right and in here nice and convenient got our 65 litre um, Waco fridge um, so all of our food and stuff goes in there so we've got all the cooking and kitchen stuff on one side um, and it, putting the fridge in here frees up more space in the canopy for us. So yeah, here is the kitchen. So it just slides out. Got a little extra table here on the side. When we stop for lunch, we don't even normally pull it out. I'll just make lunch on this side. So heaps of storage in here. We just keep all... Oh, Bundy's just taken off after the drone. We've got heaps of storage, we just keep, so like I've got me gas, just some spare plastic bags, solar light, we hardly ever use this actually. Some sponges. Um, this side I keep some foil, um, the, the grate and some pots and pans. Um, I find with pots and pans, like this is way too much storage for what you actually need for two people. Like literally all I have is a big enough pot for like pastas. I keep a big pan for like kind of like stir fries and stuff. Sometimes you can do steak in there if you really need to. And then I've got a smaller pan for just like eggs and bacon in the morning if you don't want to work. Do it. Stuff up a big pan. And then I've got a double burner. This is just an old Jackaroo stove. And um, so that's what we just put this little gas bottle to. So we just need to calm everything in here. Um, this gas hose just goes straight over to the bottle that stays in there. We get plenty of books out of it. Um, and I've got a cast iron plate that goes over the top, which pretty much just turns into burner like Coleman, Jackaroo, whatever you got um, into pretty much just like a barbie plate. So, 
that's the cooking side of things. So that's that all shut up. Um, sink. So it's actually got a full sink in here. Um, because it's on a drawer slide. I was a bit tight for a room. I didn't worry about doing like a ladder system so then the cable didn't get caught up. I just keep a short little lead here that can be unplugged and plugged. You got the switch here, turns the water on and off, sort of. Just drains through. I do have a little hose that sometimes I connect it. What I do is then when I'm packing it back up, I put it to about here, just so the sink's just hanging over the back. I run the hose up and under and I just drain it underneath so then you're not standing in water and shit where you can't. At the back here, we just keep a Oztrail bin bag on the back of the spare wheel. Um, I just keep me a little shovel. That's just a normal little rigid shovel. It got cut down. So as a plumber, we've got heaps of fucking leftover shovels. So we just keep, yeah, that's all rubbish. We dump that when we get to where we need to get to. I have here, these are really handy actually. These are just from the reject shop. These are just, you put three AAA batteries in them. They got sticky on the back, this one not anymore. But um, you just press them. So I just keep a bunch of these. I've actually stuck them all throughout. I do have a full light set up. So the lights that I have set up, I have light bar here on the door, on the other side door. Um, I keep one in the middle section and then one in the roof sleeping part. So that's all these switches here that are just behind the BCDC. I run a 120 amp hour AGM gel cycle, gel cycle battery. I'm pretty sure it's called. I don't know. I've been through two of them. Well, I mean, I'm on my second one now. The first one's actually still good. I had circuit breaker issues and I went out and bought another battery and then realized it was my circuit breakers, automatic resetting circuit breakers. So I, to, in the future, I'm actually gonna connect my two batteries together. Um, I don't have that set up at the moment. Um, get over here. Come on. Kelpies, they're fucked. They go wherever they want. Um, so pretty much it's a simple setup. I've just got like a little eBay special um, voltage reader so that tells me what my battery sits at um we haven't been anywhere for a while and i've just had knee surgery so i've had everything turned off because i don't like to run my batteries below i don't they say don't run them below 12 but you know 11.5 11 ish i definitely don't go below that um so i have just a cigarette lighter here two usbs and this is a 350 watt projector inverter so we didn't always have this. I didn't see the need to have an inverter, but now that I have the drone footage, the SLR, um, yeah, so the drone, everything, it's just heaps easier to just get all that shit going and charge all that while we're, and I, to be honest, I actually don't use it while we're stationary. I always use it while we're driving. So yeah, that's, and then everything's run by the BCDC. This is like one of the first ones. So what is it? It's, it is a 1220. So that's the one without solar input. Um, so I do have a little Anderson plug down here that is run off, um, I just have an external solar panel with its own little solar regulator on it and I connect that directly to the battery. Um, so I'm not an absolute electrical whiz. I've done this enough times now that I know what's going on, but my best mates are Sparky, so Cops and Oaks, Aaron Oaks Electrical legend he's helped me hook all this up and we've done it in like the last three of my canopies so now after three canopies i know what's going on but um yeah it's pretty simple so you can see everything out the back there it's um it's a bit of a mess it can't open right up but that's pretty much where everything goes i just keep it connected with this little bit of elastic here but um yeah so pretty much everything comes like you got your main that comes in from your battery goes through into your BCDC, out of your BCDC, into your secondary battery. I run everything through a fuse board. So I just got this little tiny fuse board. I run all my lights off 10 amp hour micro, or well not micro, mini fuses. Uh, I run the fridge on a 15 and I've got, I think it's like a, a, tw a tw I don't know, like a 20 or a 50, I can't remember, um, that runs the inverter. And then all the negative runs through the negative bar, keeps it all night, nice, neat, and tidy, all the rest of it. It's, um, it's, canopies have come heaps far now. They've got like whole managers and all the rest of it, red arc, but look, this thing does the job. So that's that side. Radio, so out the back, pretty simple, nothing too major going on. 
Um, I just keep this is jerry can holder, so that's 220 litre um, Crip Jerry's metal ones. The um, old caps were terrible. The new models are slightly better, but still shit, to be honest. You get a bit of grit in them, and then they just want to slip. Um, spare wheel. That's about it. This is where my latches are for the top. Um, underneath, I have a 75 litre water tank. Pretty simple setup. I've just got a ball valve here with a hose connection. I've got a breather on the top line and on the plumber, so I just connected it up more with rear on the inside. Um, so what I normally do is I'll just hook a hose in here, puddle of water. I'll turn the ball valve on, the pressure of the hose. Look, there you go, there's a little bit coming out there. Um, it's, so this, you can't really use this as a tap, this is just a filler. I am gonna put another pump on there soon and I'm actually gonna put two water points. So I'll probably do one out the back here and one on the side. One you can connect like a little hose to and one you can just probably maybe gravity just to wash your hands after you do a bit of recovery or something. Um, but yeah, so I just turn that ball valve on, I connect the hose, the pressure of the hose fills the tank and then when I know it's full, it comes out the breather on the inside there. And then click the ball valve off, disconnect the hose, get a little bit wet, sort of. This side, pretty basic. I've changed this side a few times and I'm contemplating changing it again. Um, it works really well, but just to free up a little bit more space. Honestly, you know, people do these big, big drawers for you recovery gear. You really don't need that much. A couple of snatches, tie repair kit, like, I keep a little bit of stuff, so I keep some spare ratchets. Like you've seen, I normally keep the boat on the roof, so I keep some spare ratchets. I've got like winch extension straps, tree trunk protectors, two snatch traps, a bit of tools, tire repair kit, like all in this little drawer. Um, this top one here, I just keep some spares. So I got like, I got a spare gas bottle hose. I keep um, like cable ties, some bits of tape, um, a rag. Um, a few different bits of oils um, but that's pretty much all there on this side this is just the king's it was like the first tool box that come out it's pretty good actually it's got everything you need i've had to replace a few things that are broken but like for a hundred bucks man you get ratchy um spinners with it as well like they're fucking expensive as it is um but yeah any extra stuff that i throw in here i actually have like um, four different bits of cable, so like thickness cable. Um, that's just to repair any electrical stuff that I get. I keep a little soldering gun. I keep some heat shrink wrap. I keep a uh, multimeter. That's really good, chasing around 12 volt shit. That is a freaking pain in the ass when you get a problem there. Um, just some extra bolts. Um, just That's the best thing, a smorgasbord of heaps of different bolts. Um, and a rivet gun and some silicon. <laughs> I just keep all my fishing stuff. So that's just all lures. This this pocket goes right to the other side. So the solenoid panels go behind that. Um, uh, like a spare like hiking camp chair. That actually comes in handy because we only use a double chair. I think it's called the Oz Trail Moon Chair. It's sick. It's awesome. You know, I've actually passed out, slept on it along the fire. Plenty comfortable for one person. Good enough for two. But we just keep the spare in there in case Tanara are fighting and then I sit on the other chair. <laughs> so up here, I just keep like, this has just got bits and bobs really. I keep like, normally I feel like I'll just put a couple of drills in here if we're going on a big tube. I keep my opposite lock compressor. I keep some oil for me outboard motor for the boat. These are me reels. Um, that's about it. Me sounder, bits and pieces, all the rest of it. Um, and I thought I may as well tell you this. So this is, it is lockable. So what I actually done was, it's mesh, it's got all the T-locks, so it's lockable. And then this is just like PVC on the side. At the time, we were planning to go to the Simpson Desert. I was really stuck on time. I'd rolled my car at the time. So the car was getting fixed at a body shop. I was trying to build this canopy purely off measurements. I'm really proud and stoked how it came out, just off measurements, because I didn't get to dry fit it or anything before I got the car back. Um, and we were kind of stuck for time. And look, to be honest, I don't work with aluminium every day. I can't weld aluminium. I've got a best mate who does. So props to you, Broden. Um, but it is, if anybody knows Broden, it's freaking really hard to get him to do any work. So yeah, we just, I just opted for the easier option. Bye, Nick. 
this is um in here we this is our sleeping arrangements but so we've got um all section foam which comes apart and you push this up can you still see me yeah so you push this bit up and it's on gas struts which is strong enough to hold these two bits up and this is where we can get changed um it's really good for when we're out the snow because it's cold put your snow gear on um and the colder weather we do have our little um coffee set up which is just here for in the mornings what just we normally do is because we do like a lot of snow camping hunting in the snow a little bit of backcountry stuff um we it's too cold in the mornings so we get changed in here we have a little butane heater as well and we do co we do coffees in that in here and like it's a super small area we actually once we put the jug on and boil that it's super super warm we have our coffee we get changed then we just peel out the side also what we do is um as you can see oh you probably can't but it's quite roomy for jack and i to sit down in here um stand up so yeah, it's quite roomy, as you can see, you get changed, you know, when you put your hunting clothes on and this, no clothes. This goes up more. Yeah. It's just, it just we've got to change gas struts at the moment. Yeah. It's they've actually they've like I've got two little one hundreds on there. It's um you yeah, they're they've they've actually kind of degassed. Good old bunning special. They um they do get weaker after time. Um but um, as I was saying though, it is roomy enough for Jack and I to sit in here if it is pouring rain outside. Um, we actually do use this little cooker and we can cook up a, um, a meal. I think last time we had, we had steak and vegetables in here. All right, so I'll give you a bit of a rundown on the bedding first. So as you can see, we've got these wooden strips here, which are made out of plywood. Um, and also what the bed sits on is just these little clips here. I believe they're from Bunnings as well. Um, so I'm just going to fold this down quickly to give you a bit of an idea, what, so I won't fold it all the way down, but that's kind of what it goes on. The bed goes down, these are our pillows, and as I was saying before, so I'm going to just jump up now, as we normally would, and set it all up. Alright, so this is it, all the magic happens, just kidding. Um, so, as I was saying before, we've got these separate, um, foam mats they came from Clark rubber pretty comfy but split doesn't work too well in the side for sleeping um, that was from our old setup we yeah. had a different bed setup I didn't have it on gas struts it all pulled apart and it was a pain in the ass so I changed it but this works well anyway when we want to fold it up um, as you can see fit two sleeping bags here um, two pillows and so now just run through the insulation um, so all insulated, so as we said, we do a lot of backcountry and snow trips, so this is great for the winter. Um, so here we've got these strong gas struts for when we ha um, do go away down the coast and we put the boat on, so we can actually sleep in here with the boat on. So what I set up was um, the whole roof's reinforced. Um, I don't actually know what the boat weighs. But um, what I, but I, um, so what, what they are, they're actually 1200 newton meter gas struts. The one actually holds up the roof when there's nothing on top. When there's two engaged, I can't actually shut the top because it's too hard. So what I do is I keep that on a swing bracket. Um, when I put the boat on, it's the first time I put the boat on, we do it at home. We, I engage that first gas strut. So then when the boat's on, that lifts fine, shuts fine, all sorted. Um, and then when we take the boat off, obviously, then I put that back up on the swing bracket and uh, we're good to go for no weight on the roof. Um, I do just want to point out another little cool thing that Jack's put in here. So this little remote up here, it is connected to the, our little power system down there and you can actually use all the lights on that little remote. And we do have it taped up there because I do tend to lose it. So. Yeah. All right, this is the inside of the car. Um, not too much has been done. Everything's pretty much the same, apart from car, car seat covers. These are Kmart special. Connection for your phone. I run a GME, um, handheld um, unit. It goes good, I don't know, it worked. <laughs> um, 
I use these scotchy, um, just magnetic. So I normally whack my phone on one and then the VMS on the other. That's what maps I use. So um, I think I said that right. Yeah, scotchy. But yeah, so magnet, they go pretty good. I don't, I have a canopy, so I don't use my mirror. So I do that. It's easy for then Tanea. She can turn around, she can navigate. Um, other than that, I run an EDS. So, and the options that I run on the EDS uh, exact coolant temp, um, a load, I think, um, uh, vehicle speed, and liters per 100k, I think. Um, I've never really fucked around with the calculating your fuel consumption and all the rest of that. I just do that myself. Look, it's not the best. I think I get about 480 pushing it um but i mean that's what you get it's a brick like especially when i got the boat on all right up the front the technical stuff um pretty much extra full bar pretty simple um i run the king seven inch the nine inches weren't gonna fit um i've got the dominator 12000 the first one it's not the x or xr whatever the fuck they are now it works i actually use this to pull the boat on so I just throw it up over the top. That's just an Audi roof rack. Um, yeah, it goes up over the top, doesn't interfere with anything, pulls the boat straight up and on. I might flop a little video in there of that getting done. <laughs> So actually, this is just like the GME starter kit. That's all I have. Um, the top part of this has actually unscrewed, so then I just whack one of these on. Um, it does the job. That's all. Some tires, lift, all that crap. Um, what I've got is the front. I've actually got, it works out to be about three inches, I think. I've got king springs, fulcrum shocks, and then I've actually got a one inch plate on top as well like those cheapo ones i just found it kind of sagged a bit over time and then instead of upgrading the whole lot i just put like a like a little one inch just to level it back out it seems to work really well um, i'm just about to change to ucas uh, adjustable ucas i'm probably going to go with the cowl off road ones if that helps any d4 owners out there so uh the canopy i've never actually put it over a wave bridge I'm not too sure, but it's like it's chassis mounted to save weight, but it is still quite heavy. It's all aluminium. I could cut weight by probably doing aluminium on the inside or ply. So on the rear, I've just got leaves and I've got, um, these are TJM 450s. It took me a lot of time to play around. It took me a lot of time to play around with that. I actually had 300 constants. Then I went to, I think I threw a set of 350s on, then the canopy changed and I had to go to a 450. Um, so that's pretty much that on the rear. It's two inch body lift all around as well. Uh, now for the motor and engine mods. I bet you guys are expecting something real hectic. Well, yeah, no, nah, nothing really has been done in here. The only thing I have done, instead of hard pipe and that look, I just threw a bunch of cable ties in that so it can't go up, blow it up any higher. I don't know. I, didn't really see much difference. Some guys reckon that helps, some guys reckon it doesn't help, so I just went the cheaper option and cable tied it. Um, I've EGR blocked. That's pretty, like a thing you should probably do. Um, so I've EGR blocked it. I've thrown a catch can in. Um, that probably needs to be empty. That's pretty gross looking. Um, and then I've got, <clears throat> From the turbo back, from the dump pipe, I've actually got um, a free inch exhaust all the way through, no cap, no muffler, um, and that is a playtime exhaust. Seems to be pretty cool, sounds pretty cool. Uh, fuel economy did slightly increase better with that exhaust, um, and I also have an iDrive as well, which I actually run it on, uh, I think it's sport mode. Sport dynamic mode or something, something, I don't know, something like that. I find the throttle response is better. You're off the throttle a bit earlier and your fuel economy is slightly better, surprisingly. Some guys could change. 
I don't know, and say different. Otherwise, look, this is just what I find is good with me. Um, snorkel, just a basic snorkel. I forgot to add um, tires. I run 33 inch. Uh, these are Mickey T's, the Deegan model. Um, these are pretty sick tire, hey. I've run BF Muddies, these are in mud terrain as well. Um, I have a mate who works at Tire Power too, shout out Prof. <laughs> um, I'm pretty lucky with my car, eh? I've got a few mates who help out. But um, yeah, no, these are sick. I rate, I think these wear a little bit better than BF's. Um, I've found anyway, I was a bit lazy on rotating, rotating the BF, so that could have been an issue. But um, yeah, no, these are sick. They're just on a 15-inch, uh, um, oh, oh, they're not a Sunraiser, they're that other fucking one. I think it's like Dynamic or something like that, maybe. I can't remember, I got them so long ago. Um, but yeah, that's pretty cool. Deegan 38s, that's what sort I of run. So, sick tyre, they look cool. They're um, quite a cool pattern. They're not very noisy on the road either, which is really like, if you're running muddies, that has to be an option when you buy them, hey, like, we go off-road every weekend, without a doubt, pretty much. So, you know, I justify getting the mud terrain tires, but, um, you know, noise on the road is an issue, and these are pretty, pretty sick. They're not, they're not half as bad as a lot of other brands. Um, roof basket, pretty simple. Um, and then on the other side, we've just got the Austrail awning, which has been involved in a rollover, to be honest, and it's still cranking, so I've got nothing. But good, good comments on that. That on my old canopy, I'd rolled the car, and like, apart from it separating from the backboard, which a couple rivets fixed, and then the zip falling off, it's, it cranks, it's a good, good awning. So that's about it. These are some of the places we've been to. Um, yeah, like I said, we've done every state in this truck, except for Tasmania and WA. So, and hope to do plenty more. It's only got, it's only just clicked over 100,000 Ks now. So yeah, I got it. It was an ex-government car, stock as a rock when I first got it. And um, yeah, put all the work into it and all the rest of it, and it should keep going. Maybe one day, who knows, maybe an LS might go in it, but I'd have to change heaps of shit, <laughs> which, yeah, probably won't happen. Anyway, that's it, that's our car, that's how it's done, that's what works for us. Comment, ask any questions you want. If you live near me, come around, have a look, doesn't bother me, I'm quite happy. So, yeah, that's what it is, sick.